What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs gotta eat. We're gonna be powering through content for the next week or so. I've made a pledge to myself. The content will not suffer, okay? We're talking trade targets. Players to be trading away. Players to be targeting. Trading for. In today's video. But today's video is going to be tough to get through because I made a pledge to myself. We will be cutting out coffee. We will be cutting out caffeine from the diet for two months. I'm still up in the air on how I want to do this. I might allow one cup on Sunday mornings and one cup on Monday mornings because that is, I want to be fucking hyped for football. And then Monday is my biggest work day. So I want to be in tune with my computer. Um, so I'm, I'm about 11 hours into this. I cut it out today and as you can see i'm struggling very mightily it's like 9 a.m haven't had a cup of coffee today all right we're gonna do this though i feel like a crackhead withdrawing right now this is kind of fun you guys get to watch my journey and in a month or two from now the fucking content is going to be elite coming out of bdge so make sure you are subscribed these intra week videos i think what i'm gonna do is monday is gonna be a long live stream like i did yesterday where we talked about all the recap and lessons learned from the previous sunday and uh, waiver wire ads and whatnot. Monday is going to be a long live stream. Thursday is also going to be a long live stream where I go and set all of my lineups for my individual fantasy teams and I recap what I did um, in my leagues previously. So you get to see my wins and losses, my record in all my leagues, and kind of follow along all the leagues that we've put up all the vlogs and stuff for. Uh, but in between, like today's video, tomorrow's video, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing per se, but I'm going to be doing a lot more short form content where these videos are probably between six and 10 minutes. I'm going to be doing a lot of YouTube shorts as well. So uh, make sure you're subscribed so you get notifications when all of those go live. Let's talk about trade targets for week two. Whew. Y'all know before. I almost forgot. That's how, that's how much this is fucking me up already. I almost forgot to tuck my damn shirt in. Stop yelling, which is impossible for me at this point. And let's eat. All right, so we'll start it off with uh, a rookie running back. This should be no surprise. You've probably heard the stat by now, but Mr. Najee Harris. Mr. Najee Harris did not have a great game. He did get involved in the passing game, which was good to see. This was just kind of like a shit game all around. A lot of the guys who started in this game did not um, put up big numbers for you. Deontay Johnson did get in the end zone, which I guess saved his day, but Deontay, Claypool, Juju, a lot of the guys on the Bills side, like a lot of disappointing days here. So we're going to scratch it up to week one, just a gritty, gritty matchup between two gritty teams in the Steelers and the Bills. The big takeaway here is Najee Harris literally played on 100% of the snaps for the Steelers, okay? Najee Harris was in on every single play. They don't have it with Anthony McFarlane on the IR. They don't have another running back to put out on the field that gives them anything close to what Najee Harris is as a player. So I'm not worried about Najee Harris at all, despite the production, because they got the Raiders, they got the Bengals, and then they got the Packers. Three teams in which you could absolutely run and run and run and run against. We know this team wants to run the ball. Uh, so Najee Harris, yes, an inefficient day. Didn't look fantastic, but I'm not worried because the workload, the volume is going to be absolutely stellar. So be looking out for Najee Harris. If someone is trying to dip out of the Najee Harris pool, put your fucking bathing suit on and swan dive into that motherfucker, all right? Najee Harris and then Zeke. We've talked about Zeke. Zeke was a guy who I talked about last week saying he was going to struggle in week one, but you're going to look to trade for him after playing against the Buccaneers. You just don't run the ball against the Buccaneers. The good part about it was he was in on so many of their passing plays. He ran a route on like 60 plus different plays. So the involvement, yes, the targets might not have been there, but now with Michael Gallup out, I think this is going to be more of a condensed funnel offense where it is Zeke, where it is CeeDee Lamb, where it is Amari Cooper. Zach Martin was also out for week one. He will be back in week two and going forward. So Ze uh, Zeke, this is really, really easy to predict because the Buccaneers just do not let up production to opposing running backs. It just doesn't happen. So we saw this shit from a marathon away. And if you didn't, that's what I'm here for, to let y'all know. Uh, so make sure that you hit the thumbs up button. If you enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're new, we're looking for Najee Harris. We're looking for Zeke, these bigger workhorse running backs that are going to be in on every single play. And we'll catch 
some passes as well. The third guy who I also talked about last week was Marquez Callaway, man. I know he had a disappointing uh, a disappointing week one where a lot of statistics and fantasy goodness coming out of the Saints passing offense because Jameis Winston threw five touchdowns. But realistically, guys, he threw for less than 150 passing yards. He threw for 148 passing yards. Only He only attempted 20 passes. So, yes, there were guys who blew up because they had a couple touchdowns like Juwan Johnson. But that's not going to be the normal day out of the New Orleans Saints camp. And he saw Jair Alexander on a lot of his routes. I know there was all this nonsense going around on Twitter. That Jair Alexander doesn't move. He's not going to shadow him. But at the end of the day, Marcus Callaway was really the only problem on the outside. And Jair Alexander lined up against him most of the time. So Marquez Callaway is going to get easier matchups going forward. I still think he's very much the one. If someone drops him, you pick him up immediately. If not, you could probably throw like... I don't know, a backup running back or some shit at him. Like, throw, try try Zach Moss for Marquez Callaway. If Zach Moss is active this week, you try to flip him. Or, you know, someone in that range, someone who, like, people think have a lot of upside and they're down on Marquez Callaway now. So you flip them into Mr. Callaway, watch Mr. Callaway run rampant for the next four or five weeks and be happy that you got him in your flex spot. And speaking of in the flex spot, Noah Fant is a tight end that might be worth throwing into the flex spot. Big game in week one, seven targets, six catches, 62 yards, 10.3 yards per reception, was moving after the catch. And this was really good to see with Teddy Bridgewater. With Drew Locke under center, I was nervous to kind of invest into any of these pass catchers because I think the offense was going to be shoddy. I think the offense was going to be inconsistent. You just never knew what you were going to get out of it. And now with Jerry Judy out with a high ankle sprain, right, we're expecting him to miss. I'd be surprised if he doesn't end up on the IR, but three to six weeks, up to eight weeks. We've seen this linger for a long time. So this offense should start to look towards just a few players. I think Tim Patrick is a really good waiver wire ad. I think KJ Hamler is probably someone to look at in deeper leagues. I'm not really too, too high on him. I'd much rather have Patrick. I think he's got a lot of touchdown upside, big play upside. Uh, Cortland Sutton looked fine. I think he's he's probably a trade candidate as well, but everyone's going to be forced into a bigger role with Jerry Judy. The thing about Judy was he was running in the slot on 70% of his routes in week one. Uh, Noah Fant was running in the slot a decent amount as well. They only asked him to pass block on two plays, on two plays. So he was not in there to be used as a blocker. Now with Jerry Judy, their slot receiver, out, you would expect Noah Fant to run a lot more routes from the slot, which is always a good thing for a tight end. It's always a good thing for a guy. like You saw Jerry Judy's getting fucking salt and pepper with targets from Teddy Bridgewater. That's like the perfect type of receiver that you're looking for. And if Noah Fant takes his place in the slot, he's going to be one of Teddy Bridgewater's favorite targets. I know my energy is so low, and I know – it might be coffee related. I fell up. I've, I woke up feeling like shit this morning at like six thirty. So that was prior to when I would normally have coffee. I don't know, bro. I'm I'm falling apart at the seams. I think I might have caught the vid, even though I got tested right before this weekend. I don't know, man. I need some words of encouragement. Please leave some words of encouragement in the comment section because we are we are struggling. You know what I do not struggle with though. I do not struggle with keeping keeping up my appearance. Okay, I'm out in New York. I'm dating a lot. I've got to keep myself well groomed. I know I cut my, I cut everything. I cut my own hair. I do my own beard and especially take care of thy downstairs. All right. Ain't nothing nastier than having a nasty, nasty down there. All right. Thanks to manscaped.com. We don't have to worry about that. Okay. Manscaped has a lawnmower 4.0. This is their newest piece of technology and it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. We use a lawnmower 2.0. We've used a lawnmower 3.0. Now I've got the 4.0 with this wireless charging kit, which is beautiful. It almost makes me not want to use it because I want to keep it in the in the charging kit. But they've got the, the clippers on top, you know, for the for the gentle, for the uh for the sensitive parts of your of your sack, of your brajol, right? Use okay, use it on the fucking balls, all right? No one wants to use a straight buzzer or a razor when they're going after the balls because you'll cut that shit. It doesn't matter how careful you're being, it doesn't matter how pristine you could have the accuracy of Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson probably cuts his balls. Russell Wilson probably has a manscaped lawnmower 4.0 so go check out manscaped.com and when you use the promo code bdge you're going to get 20 percent off plus free shipping okay keep yourself groomed please i know it's football season all you do is lay on the fucking couch fellers fellers and fellettes i wonder if girls use this shit actually they should <coughs> i don't mind a little hair keep it trimmed keep it nice keep it tight keep it manscaped all right manscaped.com promo code bdge lawnmower 4.0 you could use it in the shower it ain't going to cut you up it's a beautiful piece of technology. Thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring the video. Who else do we got on the... Tra- All right, we're trading away Robbie Anderson. All right, we are trading away Robbie Anderson. He had just three targets in this one. He was fourth on the team in targets behind DJ Moore, behind Christian McCaffrey, and behind Terrace Marshall, okay? Uh, and it was against the Jets who have zero pass rush. Like Sam Darnold, of course, he was going to have one of his bigger days of the year against this team who lost most of their pass rush uh, in the summer from injuries 
And Robbie Anderson did run as many routes or was in on as many snaps as DJ Moore was. They were both in for 52 snaps. Marshall was in on 34 snaps. So the rookie is still the wide receiver three there. And Robbie Anderson is still very much the wide receiver two there. But the involvement, man, he seems like he's just going to be a specialty player that they take a couple of shots downfield, right? Again, he saw three targets. Uh, DJ Moore saw, I believe, nine or eight. Christian McCaffrey had his nine. Terrace Marshall had six. So Terrace Marshall was in on 32 snaps, saw six targets. Robbie Anderson was in on 54 snaps and saw three targets. He connected on the deep ball, right? He connected on that beautiful, beautiful pass from Sam Darnold down the field, 57-yard touchdown, whatever it was. And that's the reason why you have an opening to sell Robbie Anderson. I'm not going to be surprised if his playtime starts to dip just a little bit and he starts to be more situationally used as the season progresses just want nothing to do with this Panthers offense in the passing game especially going down the stretch week 17 they play the Saints week 16 they play the Bucks week 15 the Bills Uh, a few weeks before that they got Washington so I don't even really even know if you're going to be able to use too many of these passing pieces even if you continue to own them down the stretch so Robbie Anderson the guy coming off that deep pass that everyone saw in the highlights I think you can move him I think you should move him he was a guy last year that thrived on volume and volume alone. He had so many targets. He wasn't good on the targets, but people remember him as being a guy that saw a ton of targets early on. He didn't score touchdowns. This year, it seems like the volume's going down. Terrace Marshall seems to be a bigger and bigger piece every time we see him get on the field. So he is the clear wide receiver three there. I think he's going to start dipping into Robbie Anderson's uh, workload a little bit as the season progresses. The other team I would talk about is Philly, man. Miles Sanders... I wish Miles Sanders got into the end zone because I feel like he'd be a, such an easy sell. He wasn't a guy that I was targeting necessarily in draft. He was he was a guy I was avoiding actively in drafts. I don't have him anywhere in redraft or anything. This week one performance, I'm willing to sell anyone on Philly's offense because they're coming off monster games because of one thing, the Falcons, man. We are so bad. We're so bad. I argue with people on Twitter every offseason about how their offense is going to be good and Arthur Smith is going to be a saving grace. Like, what are you talking about? We're horrible. We are so bad. This video is starting to get so bad because I can feel I'm just dipping right now. I'm dipping. All right, we got to finish strong. So Philly, Miles Sanders comes in, gets like 15 carries, ends up catching like four or five passes, very involved in the passing game, which is good to see. But Kenneth Gainwell ended up being the RB2. So if you own Sanders and you want to handcuff him, it's not Boston Scott. It's Kenny Gainwell who got into the end zone, didn't really play too much until the end of the game. A lot of his production came kind of when they were milking the clock and whatnot. But I still think as the year progresses, this Philly team still has a chance. Like they looked good in week one. Jalen Hurts looked great in week one. But again, I'm telling you, this is like in preseason when everyone was going nuts about Miles Gaskin because he scored against the Atlanta offense, the second string Atlanta or the second string Atlanta defense. That's going to happen. Atlanta's terrible on both sides of the ball. Okay. They are, they, I, they're, I'm so over the Falcons. I'm so over. I can't give them any more of my emotion. I can't let them live rent free in my heart for any fucking longer. Okay. But that's what Philly is going, any team is going to look like what Philly looked like when you're playing against the Atlanta Falcons. I still think Philly's not going to be that great of a team. I still think this is going to end up being a committee in the back. Maybe you want to wait for Miles Sanders to get into the end zone and then move him, but I'm willing to trade Jalen Hurts if you're in a super flex league because you could probably get a lot for him right now. I'm willing to move Miles Sanders because people are excited about his opportunity share. At the end of the day, I just don't think, uh, more often than not, I don't think he's going to score a touchdown. More often than not, I don't think there's going to be uh, a lot of progress in that offense. More often than not, I think they're going to get multiple guys involved in that backfield. So I'll move Miles Sanders. Uh, And then, some guys that we're not panicking about right now. I know I get a lot of questions about like the Aaron Joneses, the Iukes, and whatever. Those types of videos, I'm going to do them on Tuesdays as well, but they're going to be YouTube shorts. So again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Every Tuesday night, we're going to do two videos where it's like three guys, three guys that you should not be panicking on, three guys that you can definitely cut right now um, off of your team. Maybe you drafted them and you know we only wanted to give them a week and we can get them the fuck out of here. So those are guys I'm looking to trade for or trade away we have Najee Harris we have Zeke we have Marcus Calloway we have Robbie Anderson we have Noah Fant we have uh that was really it those five guys five guys that I'm looking for in week two to either get on my squad or get them away from my squad thank you for joining me again make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new make sure you hit the thumbs up button and drop a comment with positive words because I need that bad right now thank you goodbye (music) 